So, greetings to you. We are going to start our next session and uh, just want to capture what we had discussed earlier regarding the atomic structure. In, the, in my last class, I had mentioned to you that the uh, Dalton's theory of uh, atomic model uh, consists only of the um, uh, metals being indivisible, indivisible. And then I had shown you this slide where hydrogen, helium, and lithium, etcetera, they are all uh, supposed to be having independent existence. And then I had uh, shown you that the how the development of our uh, understanding of the atomic structure had occurred and then I had uh, discussed showed you the contributions of uh, Michael Faraday, Rutherford and other people, uh, peers basically and uh, then I had we had discussed about the electron discovery of the electron, x-ray, radioactivity, nuclear reactions and subatomic particles etcetera these have led to the development of our understanding of the current atomic structure. So, I had also shown you some results regarding the proton and the electron, neutron, proton and electrons. I had shown you that the electron is basically a negatively charged particle having a minus 4.8029 into 10 raise to 10. Uh, charge uh, 10 raise to minus 10 charge and then an atomic mass of 0 0.0005486 amu that is the uh, weight converted into grams would be approximately 1.66 not 3 into 10 raise to minus 3. And then I had shown you about the protons in comparison with the electrons is it not. So, the proton charge and amu I had shown you and I had shown you that the weight of an electron is about 1640 times smaller than that and the neutron also existence of neutrons I had covered earlier. So, the particles uh, known as neutrons and other things uh, they have all been incorporated in our current understanding of the uh, modern atomic theory. So, this is where we are starting our discussion today. And uh, what I want to emphasize now is that in uh, modern atomic theory uh, especially in recent years has a highly mathematical character and several physical and uh, other characteristics can be derived from our current understanding of the atomic structure. So, in simple terms the structure of the atom is based still on uh, bohr rutherford theory only that an atom consists of a large portion of the unoccupied space and it, that means an atom has large unoccupied space it has it is uh, empty basically. So, the uh, empty space is occupied at the center with a heavy proton and neutron uh, collection followed by electrons around the empty space going round and round which are sort of uh, bound to the nucleus either not getting attracted into the nucleus or not going away from the nucleus. So, that is the space that is where the electrons will be moving around and these uh, empty space is populated by revolving electrons around the positively charged nucleus. So, the negatively charged electrons are around the, around the nucleus in the space above and they are not there at the exact place. Now, our understanding usually involved that the electrons are going round and round in a fixed uh, path. Nowadays, uh, that uh, possibility is being almost ruled out that the electrons can move anywhere else, but the fixed path has been replaced by the probability theory where I can find the electron maximum. So, that again converts into fixed path only approximately, but with a slight error uh, with a slight uh, allowance for of the distances where the electrons keep on moving around. So, this uh, slide shows you that uh, basically uh, we have the populated uh, 
the electrons are populating uh, the nucleus and uh, the relatively stable nucleus uh, nuclear mass is called as nucleus only. So, the nucleus consists of neutrons and positively charged protons. So, neutrons are negative are not charged and protons are charged. So, the atomic nuclei we are going to consider now there are two parts right. So, in the uh, atomic structure I said at the center there is heavy nucleus outside there is elect there are electrons. So, now we are going to consider the inner part that is heavier part that is atomic nuclei. So, the actual weight of the uh, of an element or an atom is uh, the actual weight of the uh, weight of the protons and neutrons. Electrons being having the same uh, atomic weight uh, same atomic charge, but of opposite sign uh, opposite sign do not in any way much contribute much to the atomic weight. So, the magnitude of the of an element is basically only due to the uh, atomic mass of the neutrons and protons. So, the neutrons and protons differ only by the charge, but not by the weight. So, we can always say that there could be some certain amount of uh, uh, the charge transfer between the protons and neutrons. We do not know, but it is quite possible. So, what we say is you uh, take neutron add an electron and it goes to proton and from the proton if you take out the positive uh, take out the charge you get neutron. So, there is some sort of an equilibrium between the two and it could be there or it may be the particles may be separate uh, having separate existence and entity even in the nucleus we still do not know. However, this equation represents an oversimplified picture as I told you. So, the small masses of the electron and positrons forbid their functioning in such reactions. For example, this E plus is uh, something like a positron E minus is an electron. Okay. So, um, that is also in simple terms only uh, it is not an exact representation of the actual system that is uh, prevailing. So, in this is again a little bit of recapture that is in 1937 he showed that the neon contains atoms of mass numbers 20 and very small fraction of mass number 22. Then now you can consider that uh, with uh, J. J. Thompson's experiment the at nucleus of an element may be different for different atoms. Suppose you take two atoms of neon one is having mass 20 and another is having mass 22 a very small fraction. Suppose you take a population of about 100 and then out of 100 there will be 90 atoms with mass 20 and about 10 atoms with mass 22. That means, Ari, the problem is how is it possible that uh, they, are, they are also neutrons, they are also neons, they are also protons and uh, but the total mass number is different but the chemically all are same. So, the chemical properties if both of them were exactly same then the scientific community started thinking that uh, the only way is uh, to think is they occupy the same places in the periodic table because they occupy the they have the same chemical properties but their mass numbers are different atomic uh, weight weights are different. So, but still they are similar in some fashion even though they are actually different, but they are similar in some fashion. So, Saudi suggested that the term isotope may be used for uh, this kind of uh, description of such elements 
meaning thereby they occupy the same place in the periodic table, they are chemically uniform, they are chemically identical and but they do differ only in physical properties because the actual weight of the atom is different. One is 20 and another is 22. So, then people started looking for different kinds of uh, isotopes for different elements. Why if this is the case, why it should be uh, the uh, case only with respect to ne uh, neons, there may be other elements also having the same uh, atomic, uh, um, the atomic mass or different atomic mass with the same chemical properties that is also quite possible. Then people started looking for other elements, find out how much of them contain the same number of uh, neutrons and protons and different number of protons and neutrons. So, a whole uh, generation of data for isotopes got generated because of that study. But the pioneer again as was uh, J. J. Thompson as uh, shown earlier and uh, the people understood that there are different kinds of uh, elements which are chemically identical, but they do differ only in physical properties and uh, even uh, elements of uh, then they realized one more uh, property that the elements of suppose there are uh, isotopes or elements with uh, odd number and even number of protons and neutrons. So, if there are 20 atomic number weight is 20, if there are 10 and 10, 10 protons and 10 neutrons, then the uh, element is very stable and they are more abundant. Then uh, if in the same 20, suppose that it, it contains 21 um, atomic weight and then there will be chemically similar means 20 protons and uh, 10 protons and 11 neutrons. So, it is an odd number, but the same chemical. So, odd number of isotopes are less abundant and uh, less stable and uh, the quantity also will be less. So, the atoms of even atomic number elements, they are more abundant, more stable and richer in isotopes than the elements of odd atomic numbers. Another uh, discovery that led to the understanding of the isotopes and nuclear structure etcetera. So, except hydrogen, hydrogen has got three different kinds of isotopes, hydrogen, deuterium and tritium. So, all of them carry the only one positive charge and one, one proton and one neutron, but they have two new two neutrons and uh, deuterium has got uh, two neutrons and uh, sorry uh, deuterium has got one neutron and one proton, hydrogen has got only one proton and the tritium has got two neutrons plus one proton. So, atomic weight of tritium would be 3 instead of uh, 1, but chemically they are all same. So, except hydrogen and tritium neutrons and protons tend to be equal in all elements. The tendency of the neutrons and protons seems to be they try to uh, be abundant enough as far as uh, the equal in equal terms. So, generally neutron to proton ratios in all elements are approximately about 1.2 but they never exceed more than 1.6 also. So, our understanding of the nuclear structure got a little more broader when we started looking at the ratio of the protons and neutrons. That is how scientific discovery and development takes place. People look at different aspects of the same uh, property, but come up with new ideas regarding their stability, physical properties, chemical properties etcetera, etcetera. That is the beauty and excitement of science. With the same in amount of information, you get lot of things to say, to interpret, to understand so many other possibilities. Now, look at it. 
So, we can make a postulate uh, that uh, nuclei with even number of pro neutrons are more abundant than, than those of odd number of neutrons. So, 2, 5, 2, 6, 4, 2, 4, 6, 10, 8 like that neutrons are more abundant than 1, 3, 5, etcetera, 7 odd number. Then we also have a property of stability that is nuclei with even mass numbers, even mass numbers means 2, 4, 10, etcetera, 2, 4, 6, even you know about odd number, odd and even numbers, right. So, with even mass numbers, they are more stable than the nuclei of odd numbers. That is also an important uh, uh, physical property that, uh, that is discovered. So, early mass spectrographic data of hydrogen indicated that its atomic weight is approximately 1.00775 that is atomic mass unit only it can't be, uh, and it is also its uh, weight atomic weight. So, this is based on the assumption that the ordinary oxygen is not an isotopic mixture, but it has an atomic weight of 16. So, what people thought is oxygen is very pure under any circumstances. So, the people thought ok, we will take oxygen as standard, measure the weight of all other elements because oxygen does not have isotope ok. So, this value was acceptable at that time and uh, they rounded off this 1.00775 to 1.00778 last digit uh, rounded off. So, the atomic weight of hydrogen is 1.00778 and uh, so many grams of uh, hydrogen combined with 8 grams of oxygen to give you water 1 uh, gram mole of oxygen uh, water. So, the discovery of again isotopes of oxygen 16, 17 isotopes now with 16, 17, 18 mass numbers throughout this theory. So, the people again started predicting that there are two types of mass numbers uh, for oxygen also which one to take as standard. So, one refers to the atomic weight of 16.0000 that is 6 zeros and the other one is known as the physical atomic weight that refers to the average atomic weight of 16.00447 ok. So, the former is universally accepted for routine purposes it is not the actual number nor is it, it is the correct number. So, correct number is obviously 16.00447, but uh, people for all practical purposes when I do not need uh, such a high decimal uh, number to talk to or to take into calculation, we normally go for 16, but actual atomic weight with respect to the available abundance of the uh, different isotopes of oxygen 16, 17 and 18 works out to 16.00447. So, the former is usually accepted for routine purpose and the physical values are used to describe the properties related to atomic nuclei. So, the again nuclear stability as I was telling you that the presence of stable elements it means the neutrons and protons are held together by attractive forces. Remember neutrons and protons at the center of the atom they also must be held together otherwise they will not be there at all. Now, why a charged particle like proton should hold a neutron 
which does not have a charge, but the facts look otherwise that both neutrons and uh, protons are together. So, there must be some sort of attractive force between the protons and neutrons in any element because every element contains uh, protons and neutrons except uh, hydrogen right. So, uh, once uh, hydrogen is discounted the, we have deuteron, a tri a tritium, deuterium, tritium etcetera and then lithium they all of them have got neutrons along with the protons at the nucleus. So, there must be some sort of attractive forces between the uh, protons and neutrons. So, the at the same time the coulombic forces must also be present for repulsion. So, the sum of the tot sum total of these coulombic forces as well as attractive forces would be more attractive than the than repulsive forces otherwise they would not be together it is as simple as that ok. So, uh, just imagine the protons are there, neutrons are there, protons are positively charged, neutrons are not charged still they are together which due to some reason and there must be some sort of binding forces. If there are binding forces between the positive charge and negative and zero charge of the neutrons there must also be repulsive forces between the two it, it, it is just logical. So, the idea is when both positive attractive charges and repulsive charges are there in between the protons and neutrons of an element the sum total must be positive or attractive if they are to be held together. So, that is the logic. So, the energy there must be some sort of energy exchange between the protons and neutrons uh, otherwise it is not possible to for them to be together. So, it would be maximum when protons and neutrons exist in equal numbers. So, the possibility of an isotope having an even number being more abundant automatically ex explains itself. Therefore, for better stability the n by p ratio that is look at the slide now the n by p ratio should be unity only that is for better stability. There cannot be any other way of interpreting such nuclear forces. So, we can again uh, um, say consider another possibility. What is that possibility? So, here we consider a proton is having a positive charge. Now, there are number of protons in a given in a given nucleus. So, but there are po the positively charged proton and negatively charged neutrons are held together for some by some forces that is understood, but there must be very big uh, repulsive force between two positively charged uh, protons that is understood now. So, if protons are still held together they must there must also be a repulsive force between the pro two protons of the same element right. So, otherwise they, they need not be together at all. So, it, there must be a tendency to repel each other existing. So, for elements containing few protons and more neutrons this tendency towards there is a tendency towards equalization of protons and neutrons. So, the atomic weight of an element show remarkable constancy indicating that the isotopic uh, composition remains constant on the earth. only oxygen shows higher abundance of heavier isotopes in the atmosphere than water. So, this you should understand why water water has got hydrogen and oxygen hydrogen has got 
hydrogen, deuterium and tritium. So, the water must be having very high abundance of isotopes of water okay, compared to just water with hydrogen, water with deuterium and water with tritium. But oxygen also has uh, isotopes. So, all the molecules in a all the water molecules in a given water body would be containing the all the isotopes of hydrogen, deuterium, tritium and oxygen 16, 17 and 18. So, only oxygen uh, among these only oxygen shows higher abundance of heavier isotopes in the atmosphere also than water. So, it makes lot of difference in understanding why sh such a thing should happen because water also evaporates along with all the isotopes at uh, room temperature. We all know that humidity is there, relative humidity is there and everywhere there is water in the air. So, the oxygen with higher isotopes should also be there in the environment with different isotopes. Further variations in atomic weights are also seen uh, for heavy elements that due to radioactive origin. We will not go much into detail about that, but it is better to understand that just like oxygen, just like water, there must be other elements in the showing variation in the atomic weight for other elements, but they could be of radioactive origin. Some of them could be radioactive, some of them need not be radioactive. That means, the radioactive elements will keep on contributing to the isotopes, population of isotopes. So, another factor that affects the nuclear stability is the shear mass of the nucleus. So, nuclei possessing excessive mass are spontaneously unstable. Okay. Uh, now, the beauty of uh, chemistry, look at it, if the element small is beautiful, you know every poet uh, says small is beautiful, small is handleable, small is manageable and all those things we know. The same is true with respect to elements also, P elements in the periodic table there are about 109 elements in the periodic table, is it not? Starting from hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, etcetera, etcetera and then copper, nickel, platinum, palladium, actinides, lanthanides, actinides, radioactive elements, laurentium and all newly discovered elements. Among all these, the one property that is very evident is uh, uh, the atomic weight. And then suddenly we find that as the element becomes bigger and bigger that means as the number of protons and uh, neutrons keep on increasing there comes a certain time when higher elements are not so stable. It is just like putting a heap of cards one above another and there will be certain amount of stability, but the moment you cross certain stage the stability it starts wobbling you know pack of cards you make them stand one above another like a pyramid and keep on building one above another. At some stage it will start wobbling and falling exactly same thing happens even here because ma elements we know that elements with excessive mass that is more than 209 that is assume that half of them are uh, atom uh, protons and half of them are neutrons about 108 uh, is the element maximum. So, above that all the elements are spontaneously unstable, uh, it is not possible to for the elements to st remain stable in the environment. So, what happens to such elements when they are synthesized in the environment or in some conditions? We all know that lot of elements are discovered in the radioactive uh, reactors, nuclear reactors. So, assume that such an element with higher atomic weight is uh, formed and uh, we keep on reading that lot of scientists keep on working on combining neutrons and protons etcetera to produce higher element uh, higher elements. So, 
such nuclei even if they are formed they will have a very short lifetime and uh, that means they must uh, dis uh, disintegrate by themselves. So, such nuclei readjust themselves by it uh, by emitting alpha particles that is uh, what are alpha particles? Alpha particles are two helium atoms helium atom with two atomic number and four atomic weight. So, they start emitting alpha particles which decreases the atomic weight by 2 uh, atomic weight by 4 amu and atomic number by 2. So, now we know that the nuclear stability is also a function of the neutrons and protons. Okay. You, so, you keep on building them they start disintegrating I just now said that the uh, elements with higher atomic number more than 209 will start emitting uh, helium atoms and then they undergo re, uh, disintegration to produce lower atoms which are more stable that is understood. That means, we are talking about nuclear reactions right. So, what kind of nuclear reactions normally we expect? Uh, in the building of the atoms. So, look at the slide now we have number of chemical reactions which will show you that uh, uh, how to build up nuclear uh, new elements or the nuclear reactions themselves can be classified into different systems that is one is uh, capture reaction, another is particle particle reactions and then fission reactions, spallation reactions and fusion reactions. So, these are all different classes of nuclear reactions that we can expect the them to go around and then there are uh, other reactions in turn induced reactions which will fall into 5 categories that is alpha induced reaction. So, that is alpha um, particle 2 helium atoms with 4 atomic mass and then proton induced reactions you take a uh, you take a uh, atomic uh, element and then bombard them with protons uh, such reactions are known as proton induced reactions. So, sometimes you bomb protons means hydrogen ok. Uh, hydrogen atoms keep on bombarding them you will get uh, a certain amount of reactions. Then there are deuteron induced reactions and then you can take the elements and uh, re make them react with gamma rays and then gamma induced these are known as gamma induced reactions and then or you can simply bombard them with neutrons. So, neutron uh, induced reactions are also there in the uh, nuclear reaction regime. So, in uh, so far about the um, nuclear uh, this thing I do not want to go more into detail because in this course we are not going to deal much with atomic nuclei. The whole uh, system of uh, this uh, electro uh, infrared spectroscopy uh, does not deal specifically with the uh, nuclear reactions or uh, with the nucleus also. It mostly deals with the electrons in the uh, uh, circulating around the nucleus. So, uh, now our discussion will having known the nature of the nucleus our discussion will move towards the electrons. Now, in 1903 Bohr proposed a radically different view of the atomic structure based on the optical spectrum of hydrogen. So, this was probably the first time uh, the spectrum was used spectrum of hydrogen was used 
to interpret the to correlate it to the atomic structure that is electronic structure. So, the earlier foundations of physics had been laid quite earlier somewhere or even around 1700 and then there was a quantum mechanical theory also was there quantum mechanics theory was around since quite long time and then uh, the black body radiations etcetera were studied earlier there was Wien's law and then Stephen's law and many other uh, uh, laws had understood had contributed to our understanding of the quantum mechanical theory also a little bit. Uh, and for the first time Bohr tried to correlate the quantum mechanics and quantum theory and the electronic structure or spectral structure of hydrogen. So, the um, first time uh, look at the slide now that is what I have written actually he try included the postulates of quantum theory by proposed by the proposed by Max Planck and uh, uh, what did he actually propose? He proposed that the electron in a hydrogen atom always describes a prefixed circular path. This figure we have seen earlier uh, that uh, in the Dalton's uh, when I was explaining to you about the Dalton's theory, I had shown you electrons going round and round with a small red uh, um, orbit in small red orbits. So, the that is Bohr's theory and uh, he had described a fixed circular path around the nucleus for the electrons to move around. So, such orbits are called stationary states and they may be thought of uh, various circles differing in radius. So, the angular momentum of each stationary state was such th this is Bohr's uh, theory that is the angular momentum he described for each stationary state was an integral multiple of h pi 2 pi where h is uh, Planck's constant pi you know what it is 3.142 etcetera etcetera right? it, uh, the number goes on infinitely. So, they, they are all multiples of h by 2 pi which amounts to angular momentum. So, the angular momentum is given by a very simple equation that is uh, m v r mass into velocity into radius is, is a multiple of n h by 2 pi. So, I have written it in the slide you can take a look, but the point here is m v r is equal to n h by 2 pi is there now where there is n, n is an integer called as quantum number. He did not say n is a variable number it is not a continuous variable, but it is it assumes n is equal to 1 and then n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3 etcetera, but not n is equal to 1.1 .1 or 1.01 or 1.2, 1.7, 2.7 like that it cannot be a fractional number. So, he postulated that as long as the uh, electron remained in a stationary orbit stationary orbit going round and round it neither radiates energy nor absorbs energy. So, the fundamental principle of spectroscopy is that the transition there must be some certain amount of transition in the energy level for the electron to go is not uh, violated. That means, on its own if you do not subject any element to any external force the electrons will remain stationary in the same orbit uh, going round and round that is their business. So, uh, the going round and round in an electronic orbit is described by the mechanical forces of attraction and repulsion and angular momentum and etcetera etcetera centripetal force and centrifugal forces. So, that the electron does not fall into the uh, nucleus. 
So, when the electron moves from one orbit to another it was considered to involve the absorption or emission of definite quantity of energy depending upon whether the electron moved from lower state to higher state or higher state to lower state. So, lower state to higher state means energy becomes less because its distance from the nucleus becomes larger or from higher state to lower state means it comes nearer the nucleus and its energy increases. So, the electron moves from lower state to higher state or vice versa depending upon the conditions. So, the energy manifests itself as radiation and the frequency of such radiation is a, is a, a manifest a spectral line which could be related to the energies of both the of the electron in both the states that is E 1 and E 2. This E 1 and E 2 are simply arbitrary numbers that do not mean much except to signify the one is E 1 is may be lower E 2 may be higher, but it could be the other way around also. Okay. So, we assume now that the spectrum of an electron of one electron can be uh, of two types one is going to higher energy another is going to lower energy, but there are number of electrons. Okay. So, all these electrons move could be moving from one energy level to another energy level all electrons. Then another possibility exists that the electrons from second energy level may fall to the first electrons from third energy level may fall to the first or second electron from third level may fall to first second or third right. So, the possibilities of electrons moving from one energy state to any other state is quite large it is that means the more number of possibilities means no more number of spectral lines. Okay. So, what uh, this line spectra of hydrogen what was observed and the, you know the most of these spectra were recorded even somewhere around the 1700s okay, late 1700s, but people did not know how to interpret them. It was first time introduced. Uh, somewhere around the 1800s or so when people tried to understand what is happening in the spectrum. So, we knew a series of uh, dark lines seeing, uh, but can correlate them to wavelength and spectrum uh, also. So, according to this Bohr's law n is n varies from 1 to any number 1 to n or 1 to infinity also. Okay. So, the, uh, the n is when n is 1 all electrons from uh, orbit number 2, orbit number 3 and orbit number 4 all of them can fall to n is equal to 1 that is first electronic uh, level. And then instead of uh, uh, when from 3, 4, 5 electrons in the orbits 3, 4, 5 may fall to second orbit. 2, 3, 4 may fall in 1 fall up to 1 and 3, 4, 5 may fall up to 2 and 4, 5, 6 may fall up to 3 and 5, 6, 7 should fall up to 1 and electrons in orbit 6 and 7 may fall up to 5. So, there could be higher numbers, but they do not have much significance in the interpretation of line spectra of hydrogen. So, if this is the case n is equal to 2, 3, 4 and uh, n is equal to uh, if the all of them fall to the same energy level that means, the region of spectrum is these are all these uh, spectral lines follow a particular uh, uh, transaction and uh, transition and for, for n is 2 to 1 there is one line. 3 to 1 there is one line 
4 to 1 there is another line. So, it describes all the possibilities describe a series of lines spectral lines as far as hydrogen uh, ion is uh, hydrogen spectrum is considered. So, we have different series one is Lyman series where n is equal to 1 final uh, resting place for the electron and then this is in the ultraviolet region and second is Balmer series that is uh, in the visible region and then Pashtun series near IR, bracket series, fund series etcetera. These are all in microwave and radio wave regions etcetera. So, the origin of hydrogen spectrum uh, Bohr's theory could explain the spectra of hydrogen, uh, but it failed completely to uh, when applied to multiple electron systems. See in this case, in the case of hydrogen, there is only one uh, um, electron that could that one electron could be in n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3 etcetera. But suppose I have an element with 10 electrons. So, all the 10 may be in n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3 like that the possibilities of the electrons being in different um, orbits could become enormous and the, sp the spectrum could become very complicated. So, Bohr's theory failed to account for the multiple electron systems. Further, it could not account for splitting of optical lines that we will study when we go up in uh, and the understanding of our electronic structure, but basically it is uh, regarding the fine structure when spectroscope of high resolving powers were employed. This again required a technical advancement of uh, manufacturing very high level spectroscopes. So, we will study further about the electronic structure and electronic transitions and their relation with uh, the spectrum in our uh, next class. Thank you.